open up to questions from the audience. Um, I have a, an opening question for our screenwriter. And we were just chatting uh, before walking out here, and he let me know that he's also the producer, one of the producers of this film, too. So I want to know what was it like to go from screenwriting to also having a hand in producing? Did that start from the beginning, or was that, how did that generate? Um, it, initially, this, this actually started as a studio movie uh, at Fox Searchlight. Uh, after uh, my friend and writing partner and I uh, made 500 Days of Summer, uh, we were looking to do another thing with Fox Searchlight, and um, we came across this wonderful book, uh, Spectacular Now, by Tim Tharp. And um, it, briefly, this was going to be a studio movie and us working with them again, and then uh, the, the head of Fox Searchlight, Peter Rice, left to go run Fox Television. And we sort of lost our, our champion of this project. Uh, and it was after that that we got a lot of notes like, well, what if we did it without <laughs> drinking and sex and partying and sort of took all the stuff out that made it an honest movie? And that was sort of when we realized we have to go make this uh, independently. So when, when it switched from being a studio movie to an independent film uh, is when uh, we became producers. The, the biggest difference is um, when you're not a producer, as a writer, you kind of have to ask and beg to be involved in a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, and when you're a producer, you're expected to be involved, and, and that was nice because I'd always rather have a voice in casting and be there when they're shooting and just uh, another person uh, uh, helping with the decision making. So uh, I was in Athens for a couple of months, Athens, Georgia, where we shot the movie um, uh, for a couple of months, and, and it, was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. So how much delving into the teen psyche did you actually have to do? Um, I, you know... I don't know about delving into it, but my own teenage years were a roller coaster ride, so uh, I just remembered a lot of that. And uh, the book just felt so honest and heartfelt and uh, really captured that, so a lot of that was there. Transition is, seems to be a common theme for so many people, not just teens, although I think sometimes teens feel like they're the only ones ever transitioning. Um, well, actually, you know, speaking of that, it, it, it felt um, what I was talking before about when I mentioned werewolves and stuff. There's also another kind of teen movie that always seems like it's talking down, um, and and we never um, want to do that. I mean, it just felt like the movies I liked as a kid uh, didn't talk down to me when I was that age, um, and and we never even really thought of this that much uh, as a teenage movie, just as a love story that happened to involve young people. Uh, does anyone in the audience have any questions? Um, you will have to probably stand up and use your loud inside voice because we only have two microphones. So, um, right up here, right in the middle. Yeah. Um, what was it like adapting such a, a novel like this? Uh, and also, what's it like working with Shailene Woodley? Because I know you're going to work with her again. Uh, yeah, the question is what is it like to adapt the book and uh, what it was like to work with uh, Shailene? Um, you know, uh, the book was really, I don't know how many people have read the book, it, it was shortlisted for the National Book Award for, for YA. Um, it's, it's really wonderful. And um, the trickiest part of the adaptation was, uh, it, it's told in the, the Sutter's voice. So taking a lot of the, the internal and finding ways to bring that out uh, in conversation with others. Uh, and it was a fun challenge, because it was really about having to actually cut things from the book because there was so much good stuff there. The only other significant change from the book was, um, without giving away too much, the ending of the book is very bleak. And we didn't want to put a, 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 some rosy ending and walk off into the sunset, but I felt it needed a little hope. Um, maybe there's a chance for these two. Um, so the, the, coming up with sort of the, 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 the right balance for the end um, was probably the biggest challenge. Uh, Shailene was amazing to work with. Uh, in, a, in a set that was frequently um, kind of a boys club, she was the most professional, most prepared person every day. It was so great to work with her. And uh, uh, she would joke, actually, um, that she uh, agreed to be in Spectacular Now because she wanted to be in The Fall of Our Stars, which is a, another book adaptation uh, we're, we're shooting with her this summer. And it was just a joke. She, she uh, had to go out and beat out about 
200 actresses to get uh, uh, the part of the Fault in Our Stars, and uh, we are we're so happy to work with her again. Yes, to the Grace um, letter. No, no, no. <laughs> um, do you have any advice for any um, screenwriters uh, regarding process or anything that they can do to try to get into the business? My best advice for aspiring screenwriters is it's really simple. Write every day, and then write some more, and then keep writing. For me, uh, it wasn't until my uh, probably mid-20s that I realized I needed to make writing more important than even more things in my life. Um, and it seemed like it was something I was doing when I felt like it, when I was in the right mood, when I had a good idea, and it was realizing that writing when I didn't feel like it, when I thought my writing was terrible, when I had a headache, when I wasn't in a good mood, it was writing during those times that actually made the difference, because then it became something I just did all the time. Um, and that, that's it. I, I, I think of it almost competitively sometimes, that when I'm not writing, someone else is. Um, and, and then it gets a little compulsive. Uh, sometimes it drives my girlfriend crazy. But you, you just keep doing it and keep doing it, and I promise you'll see results. In the hat on the side here. Did, um, did you turn to James Ponsel because of Spanish to make this or because of the alcoholic uh, component of that, or, or did he find you guys? Uh, we, we found James um, in the five years uh, that it took to get made. We actually had a few different directors over the years that, for various reasons, it, it never worked out with, and probably a few different incarnations of the cast and where we shot it. and. Um, so many times this movie looked like it was never happening, and uh, we saw Smashed, which was James's previous movie, which you haven't seen, is, is really wonderful, and uh, the performances in that are brilliant. And it, it actually, really for us, had nothing to do with the alcoholism, and we thought, um, oh, there's no way he's going to want to direct this movie, because why would he want to go back to that? And uh, we met with James, and uh, the book is set in Oklahoma City, uh, and, and the early drafts of the script were in Oklahoma as well. Uh, and, and we met with James, and he just started talking about his childhood in Athens, and, and uh, kids he knew like Sutter, and kids he knew like Amy, and what he'd been through. And it was as if he'd been reading our emails over the years and listening in on all the conversations we'd had creatively, and it just, we knew right away, we're like, this is the guy. Uh, and we were lucky. We, we changed it to Athens because the director being from there was a way to take a really small budget and just sort of stretch it and, and get more from it. He really was just the perfect fit. All the way in the very back. Oh, how, how did he shoot the scene where she gets hit by the car? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, you shoot a lot of that um, in the car, and the, there was a bit of a green screen behind, um, and then the special effects part, uh, we had sort of a B team that went in the middle of the night. We were on a highway half hour outside of Athens in the middle of nowhere uh, near a chicken factory and just there all night and it was uh, I didn't understand what they were doing and it looked crazy and then they put all the pieces together and uh, it, it looked great so it's not a good answer at all and uh, it's just one of the cool things just being there as a screenwriter is just learning and soaking things up but uh, on a very small budget they made that look very very scary <laughs> Right there. Okay, so you recently adapted the Fault in Our Stars, like the screenplay. So can you tell us as much as possible about the project? Spoiler alerts. Um, if, if you don't know, the Fault in Our Stars is a book that's been on the bestseller list since it came out last year. It's a really another uh, really wonderful story about young people. Uh, in that case, young people with cancer. And um, Honestly, I, I, um, I'm not a producer on that one, and, and actually I'm, I'm kind of glad, because then I'm not lying when I say I, I don't know much. Um, I probably find out stuff about five minutes before it gets announced, and um, uh, Shailene is, is the lead, and uh, they're casting now, and we're going to start this summer, and uh, I'm really excited. So I swear that's really all I know. <laughs> but there, actually, I think there's going to be a lot of news coming soon. All the way in the back. Was there any improvisation with Miles, um, like on the walk and everything? Did, were they, did you allow them to improvise at all? Yeah, no, there, there was a lot of uh, improv, and, and, and I love it. Um, frankly, the cast, they were closer to being teenagers than, than 
than any of us. Um, so uh, they they walk around and they they know how kids talk and they would come up with stuff. And this is collaborative. I mean, if you want to uh, do something all on your own, we, we always say just go sculpt or paint or <laughs> something like that. But it's nice that you know everyone comes into the kitchen and brings another ingredient. And, and with our cast, they really um, a lot of that stuff uh, they came up with. And uh, Miles and Shailene, I just thought had brilliant chemistry and. Uh, a lot of that they just brought to the table, and uh, yeah, it, it really, um, all that stuff was great. Uh, yeah, sorry, over here. I feel like Kyle Chandler usually has very sweet, clean, sweet, clean roles. Uh, this is very different for him. Did you talk about that? Uh, the question about Kyle Chandler. Um, he's amazing. Um, he uh, um, turned down the airfare uh, and drove himself from Texas because he wanted to. Uh, listen to music and think about the part and just jot down notes. And he arrived in Georgia with a stack of pages, unlined paper, and he just jotted down notes about the character. Uh, and we, we talked about it a little bit, and there were a couple of lines that he wanted to talk through. And he actually, uh, if you've seen Friday Night Lights, obviously it's about a 180 from the character from Coach Taylor. Uh, and, and he wanted to um, play the character. These are my words, not his. Even more harsh than it was written. He said, uh, the father is not looking for anything. He's not looking for a relationship. He doesn't feel like he owes anything. He made a choice and then stuck to that choice. And man, I mean, it comes off cold. It's, it's so great. He really, uh, we were so lucky to have him. With that, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, so what would it feel like? Did you feel bittersweet after it premiered at Sundance where you were just like, Finally, did you feel that our sweet after was over? Uh, no, this, this part's exciting. Uh, you, know, you, you know what it is? You, you live with something for a long time, and, and, and Scott and I thought for years this was never getting made. And so it's something that's so important to us, but it doesn't exist beyond just a small group of people. And now it belongs to everyone. So that, this is the most fun part. So um, just that people have been responding to it and uh, to go and do things like this, so this is great, so. Um. And the jacket on the end. Did you know Miles was your person for this when you first uh, did your interviews? Or, yeah. No, no, actually. Um, Miles came in and auditioned, and uh, by, his, by his words, he bombed the audition the first time. Um, and we had gone in a few different directions, and it had come back around, and Miles came back in, and he just killed it. And he is this kid. Um, you meet Miles. He comes into a room and has this energy, and he makes 10 new friends in three minutes and just lights up a room, and he knows all about you right away, and, and he has a lot of that kid in him. It's really uh, something amazing to see, and just understood the kid, and um, uh, it, we really, again, just another thing where it took so many years to get this made, and we really ended up making it with the right people, and had we made it years ago, it would not have been someone as good as Miles. We have time for one more question, right on the end, or in, on this side in the back there, blue shirt, t-shirt. Um, I read the book many, many years ago, when it came out, and one of the things I think I thought set it apart from other books was the job of the time for it. Um, and I was wondering um, if you would, I really like the scene, but I was wondering if you tended to include more, or if you limited all that possible in terms of availability, or if that kind of the way you wanted to show it? There in Athens, Georgia, there is a soup store right on Main Street. Uh, we didn't have to uh, set dress, which is, you know, you, you take an empty place and you, they, they buy a lot of cheap stuff and they make it up. That, we didn't have to change a thing. And the store, the room upstairs where uh, he tells Bob Odenkirk that, that he can't show up to work uh, without a buzz, that was there. That's the store room upstairs. So uh, one of the great things about shooting on location um, it's all there, and we found we were just lucky to have a store like that. And uh, you no, know, there were a few more scenes in the book, but um, you know that's the, one of the tricky things with an adaptation is you have to leave a few things out. But I, I thought the scenes that we got in the store were, were effective. So wait, there was one more person who oh, okay, saw sure, it really eager to ask it. <laughs> yes. Um, did you meet John Green? And do you have any idea uh -oh. who he wants to play Justin Slaughter? Um, <laughs> 
It's a question about Paul Norris. I did meet John Green. He was really nice um, and very supportive of us. And uh, I, I honestly let, let the best person win. The part, so. anyway, thank you very much.